So good afternoon everyone, uh, my name is Rune Magalhães and I'm a PhD student at the University of Coimbra, as I said, in Portugal, and I'm going to present some of the results of my master thesis about archaeology and religious identities, uh, specifically about the example of the individuals uh, recovered at uh, every Inquisition court. court. So, before I start uh, talking about our work, just a brief uh, historical background about the Inquisition. It was born in the last quarter of the 12th century, with the Catholic Church leading the fight against heresy, particularly in the south of France and uh, in other places, as the north, north, northern uh, Italy, too. And gradually, uh, it became stronger and spread across Europe uh, in, the, in the following centuries. Nevertheless, the, the Portuguese Inquisition, as a centralized structure, um, was only established in 1536, when several religious courts uh, were created uh, throughout the country. So, uh, Porto, Lamego, Coimbra, Tomar, Lisbon and Evra, and also in India and Brazil. During almost 300 years, the Portuguese Inquisition uh, sought the purity of faith the suppression of heresy, uh, and to discipline the beliefs of, uh, and the religious behaviors. Uh, it judged uh, the ones who committed or hated acts of, acts of uh, crypto-Judaism, crypto-Islamism, protest protestantism, witchcraft, and all the new kinds of heresy that emerged uh, during it, its existence. Just to understand how the Inquisition of Evra did work uh, between uh, 1536 and uh, 1660, uh, 8,644 individuals were presented or imprisoned at the Ever Inquisition Court and 445 were burned to death. The accusation of Judaism uh, was the most frequent, uh, the most frequent as, we, as can be seen in the image. Having said that, the aims of this work are to understand how the individuals of the Inquisition of Evra may help to justify the presence of deviant burials in Catholic churchyards, if it is possible to identify minorities or religious radicalism in the Middle Ages uh, without written sources, and how an interdisciplinary approach can result in the reinforcement of the knowledge of religion and religious practices. So the archaeological excavation led by Krivark Archaeologia took place uh, in the former Ever Inquisition Court, uh, that building right there, uh, with the, the aim of uh, the recuperation and valorization uh, of two compartments, the Casa Pintada Gallery, which is this, this compartment here, and uh, the, oh sorry, and uh, the jail cleaning yard. This is the, the plan of the Inquisition Court of Evra from 1634 by Mateus do Couto, which was the architect of the Portuguese Inquisition at that time. And the two, com the two compartments uh, are located right there, Casa Pinta de Gallery and the jail cleaning yard and near the, the prison cells. And uh, the human bones were recovered only in the jail cleaning yard, which uh, uh, was named uh, in this place, which was named by Matheus de Couto himself. In the current study, the methodology included three steps, the analysis of the excavation reports, the evaluation of the, the biological profile of the pleop and, uh, and pleopathology of the individuals, and uh, an extensive uh, historical research, research in the manuscripts filled in the District uh, Archive of Evra and in the, tom in the Torre do Tombo in Lisbon. So first I'm going to present the main results of our work and then uh, I'm going to try to, to answer to, to some questions that my colleagues uh, Guillermo and Carlos rose in the, in the interests of this panel. So a minimum, a minimum number of 16 individuals was scored, of which 12 adults in articulation three males and nine females, all of them recovered in the dump of the former uh, Evra Inquisition Court. The, the documental research uh, conducted on the historic manuscripts 
showed that the, the, that this dump was in use somewhere between uh, 1568 and 1634, and at least 87 individuals died uh, imprisoned in the um, in the Ever Inquisition court during this period. Of these 87, we know the description of the post-mortem treatment of 12 individuals. And uh, how do we know that? Because it is referred in the description of the death in each one of the individual historical records, uh, like uh, this one here. And um, in these two examples, uh, where it's stated, um, as in these two examples, uh, where it's stated that she was buried in the first one, she was buried at the proper place in these prisons, and the other one, he was buried as the, at the usual place in this, prison, in this prison. So these are the usual references to the individuals which were discarded in the jail cleaning yard. And all these uh, 11 individuals were accused of Judaism, heresy and apostasy. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in the other case uh, of, a, uh, of a male accused of bigamy and polygamy, it is stated that it was buried in the uh, church of Saint Anton of this city. So the, the individuals were uh, probably discarded in the dump of the Ever Inquisition court, uh, most probably because they were accused of uh, Jewish practices. So one very interesting question that Guillermo and Carlos posed us is what, the what are the material traces associated uh, with the religion uh, behind the buildings of, of worship and funerary rituals. So uh, we try to identify traces re related with uh, torture, traces that could uh, differentiate the, the, these uh, individuals of our sample from individuals of other samples. And we focus it in, a, in the two official tortures of the Portuguese Inquisition, testing these two hypotheses. The, for, the first one, does Trapado predispose to higher frequencies of osteoarthritis in the articulations of the shoulder and elbow? And the second one, are upper and lower limb fractures frequent in prisoners from the ever, uh, from the ever Inquisition court because of torture? So can we distinguish these two features from individuals of other samples? In 2012, we presented an, an exploratory study testing the osteoarthritis hypothesis. Um, these are some of the usual um, changes related uh, with osteoarthritis, uh, leaping, um, and porosity, and uh, abornation, essentially. Um, essentially, the results showed a higher prevalence of osteoarthritis in the shoulder, elbow, and knee, which are consistent with the results from other investigations. And so we conclude that this, this high prevalence of uh, this high prevalence most probably can be explained by the use of Strapado, because the individual historical records also show that these individuals were only tortured uh, with Strapado once or twice at the most during specific moments of interrogation, and not during all the time which they were in prison, which could last several years waiting for a sentence. So. In this case, age, sex, or occupation may be better explanations of the osteoarthritis results, uh, which are usually justified as the result of uh, several factors. And so we have not found a, a direct evidence of an association between osteoarthritis and torture. Regarding trauma in the individuals from the jail cleaning yard, jail cleaning yard um, uh, fractures in seven ribs and in one fifth metacarpal were identified. And uh, although rib fractures are reported as a common finding in human skeletal remains, we can be sure if these traumas are prior or subsequent to imprisonment. And either way, this kind of fractures um, is not associated with torture. And this is the main point that uh, we want to emphasize right here. Nevertheless, we found a reference to, to trauma during torture in several individual historical records. Uh, here we have two examples. In the first one, the torture of Strapado resulted in a broken arm. Uh, the individual died the next day. Uh, and in the second example, the torture was stopped by the physician of the Inquisition uh, of Evra because the individual was too broken and in danger of death. So although the identification of perimortem fractures is very difficult, 
At this point, uh, we need the, the total excavation of the archaeological site and to better understand this, this relation between trauma and torture. And uh, uh, only 12% of the site was excavated. So another question, which is also related with the previous one, is it possible to identify minorities and religious radicalism in the Middle Ages without written sources? One of the most important features that uh, this excavation brought us was the contextualized information on how these individuals were treated by the Catholic Inquisition at the moment of their death. In this case, the lack of funerary rituals, uh, the absence of pits or grave goods, or the variety of orientations uh, and positions of the body, for example, is expressive to understand who, uh, who this, uh, uh, this or who the, the Inquisition considered these uh, individuals uh, were. And thus, it can help us to understand, for example, deviant burials in uh, the archaeological record, spe specifically in, in Catholic uh, churches over Portugal, in medieval, modern, and contemporary ages, like the examples in the pictures. So we can hypothesize more accurately why these individuals had uh, received a religious punishment observable through the funer funerary practices. So regarding the mechanisms developed by the Catholic Church to deal with religious minorities and how changes in religion are linked to, to ch changes in lifestyle, the, establishing, the establishment of the, the Catholic Inquisition led to severe changes in lifestyle of the, the religious minorities because they were basically prohibited. The religious cults of the minorities were then practiced in secret and a culture of fear was instigated from uh, 1536 onwards. The best uh, example of this culture of fear in everyday life is to understand how the Portuguese Inquisition worked. Uh, I'll give you four examples, uh, four quite enlightening examples. Uh, delation, for example, the Inquisition required a, a vigilant and denouncing population. Delation of neighbors and relatives uh, kept uh, people in constant alert and fear of being denounced. The process, uh, although the defendants had the right to defense, they didn't know their accusations or who denounced them. The secret of the process until it was over uh, was one of its main features. The imprisonment also. The prison cells were very small and dark, without natural light, and often, often with uh, four or five or more prisoners inside the same cell. And torture, uh, which was used when the defendant's confession was distinct from, from the accusations. So I think this culture of fear is a, a good example on how the Inquisition changed lifestyles and developed uh, radical mechanisms to deal with the presence of uh, religious minorities. Concerning the limits uh, of the analysis of burial areas and the identification of uh, an alternative religious discourse, of course, this investigation has limits, but in the case of the jail cleaning yard, several features led us to understand the presence of a non-normative religious speech. The, the absence of funerary ditches suggests uh, suggest that the bodies were deposited directly in the dump, were discarded. The, variab the variability of the orientation and position of the body and limbs um, and the absence of grave goods are not in accordance with the procedures of a Catholic burial. And these results are underlined by the fact that the individuals were recovered from a, lo a location that was not sacred, in this case, a dump. And also, uh, and so uh, all these pictures uh, can be interpreted as a non-normative religious speech, which intended to punish the body of the individual and especially the, and especially the soul. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, as we have seen in the previous communication, uh, an interdisciplinary approach, when possible, of course, is the best way to reinforce the knowledge of uh, religion and religious practices in the past. And an alternative funerary treatment or a lack of funerary treatment may also be very informative uh, and, and uh, understood as an alternative religious discourse. And it is possible to, to discuss the interpretation of de uh, deviant burials in Catholic churchyards based in the, um, on the individuals of the Inquisition of Evora, 
And that was what we tried to state on our paper published uh, just last year, and of course also uh, today in our communication. So, thank you.